So hello, um, I'm taking the opportunity to do this video out in the garden because here in the UK we don't often get nice sunny days like this one. So I thought I'd enjoy it and better lighting outside and you can hear the bird song, which is good. So I called this video Getting to Know My Diana F Plus. And here it is. Um, mammography camera, plastic toy camera, made in originally in Hong Kong, now made in China sold by the Lomography Company and there's lots of bits and pieces so I thought I'd talk you through what I've got. It's a medium format camera normally which takes 120 film and you can either do square format or slightly oblong format so when you're doing the square format it doesn't matter which way you hold the camera obviously and with this particular model the standard lens is a 75 millimeter lens which is the equivalent of a 30, uh, 50 millimeter lens on a 35 mil camera which is a standard lens so that clips into place like that you take the lens cap off and you have a 75mm and you have a frame in the back that fits in there which is for square pictures and then this just basically slides onto there like that clops into place and you lock it off on the back here you can take set this to take 12 pictures or 16 pictures 16 pictures obviously uh, not being the same size and shape as 12 12 pretty much fills the film as it's 120 film it's 12 exposures and uh, and that's basically the 120 so just to run over the camera a little bit you've got settings underneath here which is for uh, cloudy partly cloudy sunny and pinhole and we'll talk about pinhole later so cloudy is I believe f11 plenty sunny cloudy is f16 and the sunshine is f22 and P for um, pinhole is uh, f150 now with this camera with a 75 millimeter lens if you look through the viewfinder you see what uh, what the film's going to see near enough, not exactly, but then that's the fun of a Diana, uh, your Diana camera. You've got two shutter settings, which is N, which is normal, and B, which is open. So when you put it onto normal, you fire, it's at 160th of a second. And when you put it onto B, when you press down, it opens, and when you let go, it shuts. And if you want to take long exposures, you have this little plastic doodah here that comes with the camera. And it goes around that way and then so when you open the sh shutter you pop that in there and then that holds the shutter open and then when you move it the shutter shuts so you can have it open for as long as you want obviously if you're moving it around like that you're going to get very blurry so the trick is to put the lens cap on open it put the plastic thing in and remove the lens cap obviously you'd have this on a tripod or something so that you don't get um, blurring in the pictures so that's pretty much it really you've got focus on the front here this is snow cap because i've also got a uh, diana snow cap which is the same camera it's just a special edition and you set the, um, the focus by turning this knob at the front here and you've got 2.4 and you can set the focus by turning that 1.2 meters, 2.4 meters and 4 meters to infinity. Now it also comes with a flash and in this case I've got this little smashing little plastic uh, leather case I mean that the flash goes in and the flash goes, it's very tight fit and the flash just clips onto the top of the camera as simple as that. Turn the flash on And then it recharges, a little light at the back comes, you can't see it in the sun, a little light at the back comes up here, and then when you fire, 
flash wires. It's as simple as that. Turn it off, unplug it. You've also got this, which is a flash holder. And that plugs into there, which means you can use any electronic flash on there that you like. Or you can clip that into there and then plug that into there. But it seems a bit pointless, but a lot of people seem to do that. Now, we have another lens, which is the super wide 35 millimeter. Now this is super wide on a 120 camera because as we said the standard lens would be uh, 75, 30, 38 sorry, the standard lens would be 75 so 38 is going to be super wide and it says here Dyna Plus super wide. Now this time the focus rings here, exactly the same as before, nothing else has changed on the camera except we've got a super wide lens on the front. But what makes this particular one special is when I remove the case, and obviously this is where the the roll the 120 film loads in here and goes onto a spool which should be on that side, but the spool's not in there because I'm going to take this out. Obviously you can take pictures without that frame in there, but here, I've got, oh, sorry, i remove this, which is the, the spool holder for the 120, and this is a bit fiddly, and you've got to be careful, you don't break it. And then we put the, have a 35 millimeter back fitted so now the 38 millimeter wide angles not so super wide angle now it's just a nice wide angle and we can load that 35 mil in there it's on the take up spool there the window there through minus what film we've got in there Instead of being at the top, this is at the bottom because it's part of the thing. This is the rewind knob. And here you can ensure that you're logged in. So that's the 35mm. Now, obviously, with 35mm, you've got different sizes of backs. So there's a 33 34 and a 33 48. And this is the one I always use, which is uh, the standard size for 35mm pictures. So that's going to give you the standard 35mm frames. So it's, it's pretty good. We remove that. We'll put this back on. Now, with the super wide angle lens on, what you see through the viewfinder is not what you're going to see on the film. So, this one comes with this adapter that goes onto the top. So when you look through there, you're seeing what you always saw. But when you look through here, the top one, you look through this one, you'll see in the super wide angle that that would see. It's not wholly accurate, but it does allow you to give you an idea of what you're taking picture, what you know, what, what's in your frame of view. So there you are. That's my little Diana that I'm absolutely falling in love with. I think I'm becoming a lamography nut, and I shall be taking lots of pictures with these. Hopefully, which I'll show you soon. So earlier on, I mentioned the pinhole option to take pictures. 
We had this option down here with P. If I take the lens off, you can see the actual size of all the different. So you can see they get smaller, and that's the pinhole option. So with the pinhole option, you're obviously with an f-stop of 150, you're going to need a lot of light coming in. So you're probably on a bright sunny day like this with 400 ISO film, you're probably looking at 30 seconds to a minute to get a picture. And what's wonderful about pinhole is this fantastic depth of field. You get wonderful wide angle, but with no bends in the horizontals. The horizontals and the verticals stay square because of the pinhole. So that's really interesting. Or you can use the pinhole with the lens on the front. Well, I should be doing some pinhole photography. And I shall show you the results of those as well. A lot of the timings is guesswork because there's no light meter that gives you a reading for 150 uh, aperture of f of 150. But um, there are guys that have worked out mathematically and there are crib sheets you can use. Whereas to be perfectly honest with you, I think experimentation is the best way to go.